everyone, welcome to Watch It Paint It. This video, I am back. I am on wave two straight away. You know, I didn't make, keep you waiting longer, Diane. We're going to start with the Abomina Bunny. Uh, I know it's a small one. Uh, it might not be the one everybody's waiting for, but you know, you've got to start off small, haven't you? And I just thought it's difficult painting one video in a week, let alone two. But if I do a small one, maybe I can get that done. And here it is. So we're going to start off. I didn't prime this, so I'm going to be using Vallejo's game color. This is 50% cold grey mixed with Necromancer Cloak from Army Painter. Just darkening it down and the game colour is going to work enough as a primer to give it that priming coat. And that is going to be the sort of shade shadow of the white that I want to use. Next I'm going to take out some Crushed Skull. This is in that new Green Horde set that the Army Painter did. And this video could be really, really short. So I'm just going to elongate it slightly by showing some techniques just in case some of you are brand new. I don't show this every video, but once in a while I like to show it. So I'm going to show you dry brushing. I'll just show you my Art Pro dry brush. This is my favorite dry brush at the moment. The link is in the description below. It's from Quick Draw Supplies in the UK, but they do deliver worldwide and they're fairly cheap. So, and they support the channel, so we can support them by picking up one of these brushes if you need one. Anyway, what I was showing you there was putting some paint on my palette, aka a Pringles lid wiping most of that paint off like I do every time I dry brush and then very 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 lightly just going to be stroking this against the sort of grain so against the the raised parts of this model catching it on all the edges of his fur the edges of his ear you can see that back leg is already starting to pick it up on the, the raised part like the bit that the light would be catching and it's gaining more and more and more and I'm just going to go around the bunny and do this all the way around him always trying to stroke sort of away from the raised parts, the bits that would catch the paint, just lightly, lightly, occasionally adding some more paint, but wiping it all back off on that piece of kitchen paper so there's next to no paint on this. And that's going to take a few coats, just keep building that up until you get a sort of just off white base coat that you would like, I guess. Then I'm going to do exactly the same with white primer, and this is by Vallejo, but it's just a really, really bright white. And now I'm going to be going around and catching the most raised parts, so that's the edges of his ear. Quite a bit of his face, like I would imagine the, the light would be hitting his head the most. And then the tops of his front legs, the, his chest, the very tops of those back legs, the hind, hind legs, that's what you'd call them on a rabbit. And I'm possibly putting less paint on. I'm certainly being more careful. This is very, very bright and it's going to jump up very quickly. So I'm being slow, careful and very, very gentle. Just adding it and bringing out that highlight and just making his limbs and his features just pop out a little bit more and look more realistic and white and just like the sun's hitting him and that's that's the fur done that's it a bit of dry brushing two layers of dry brushing and a, a just choose carefully which gray coat i mean you, it depends how contrasting you want him to be but that that primer that very very base coat is going to work as the shadow layers of his fur and i'm going to use tan and this is by vallejo and it's a sort of dark skin color i guess is the best way of describing it i'm going to paint this is my insane detail brush by the army painter so i'm using the smallest brush i could find and i'm going to paint in the inside of his ears both of them and i'm also going to paint all around his gums that you can see so try not to catch his teeth and try and definitely not to catch any of that fur on the outside of his mouth now we've painted it done and just really really take your time this model's tiny so it's only gonna be a few strokes on each but just take your time keep you can see i'm pressing my left hand against the desk desk apologies very firmly that's keeping my left hand fairly still and then i'm leaning my right hand on top of my left hand so i'm getting sort of some pressure between them and it's keeping them as steady as i can i can manage now i am avoiding using my hobby holder that would have made that infinitely easy it would have given me a little bit more to grip using that handle but i'm trying to keep it out of the way of the camera especially with something that is this small uh just didn't want that handle blocking the view then we're going to add some shade i'm going to use the jump suit shader and again using my insane detail brush and i'm wiping most of it off on my thumbnail there just because you really 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 want a teeny tiny bit and just painting this over the top i forgot to mention to do his nose i uh, off camera added a little dash on his little button nose there and i'm just darkening that down as well with his ears you really want that shade to run in into the his sort of ear it's inner ear a little bit more leave that to dry or don't leave it to dry because you're not going to touch it for a minute if you're following along exactly with me here next is zombie skin this is from one of the army painter sets and I am going to be sticking with that insane detail. This, this rabbit is teeny tiny. I thought it was going to be quite big, actually. I don't know why. I'm just not that familiar with the Holy Grail. I thought it was a massive rabbit that we're afraid of. 
But I'm going to be just tiny, I'm going to be putting a little bit of zombie skin on all of his claws, just a little dash on each. And then I'm going to go onto his teeth and painstakingly paint on each tooth individually, really, really carefully. Make sure you've got this paint water down a little bit because you want it to flow smoothly, but not too much because it's going to run into the gaps. And I sort of want to leave as much detail on this model as I can. So you want it thin enough that it will not obscure any detail. But if you just avoid those gaps in his teeth, you're gonna basically leave the detail there. because we're gonna fill that in with some shade afterwards, really make these teeth pop out again. Next, just while we're waiting for that to dry, we're gonna use some Abomination Gore. Again, water this down nicely so it flows, but not too runny, it goes everywhere when you apply it. You can see I've just taken most of that off again. I had way too much on my brush. And I'm gonna very, very, very carefully dot him into eyeballs. So I, I think looking at the artwork of this rabbit, I think he's got red eyes with yellow pupils. So I'm just gonna carefully go around. Again, if I use the handle for the hobby holder, I'd have a slightly better grip, but you can do it without. I mean, it's not a necessity, obviously, but I didn't want it to get in the way for the for the filming. But I just, and my hands are fairly steady there. I've just got nothing to sort of lean into with that handle. Uh, you know, every little bit of help you can get, I'm always up for. Uh, but it's, this, this goes quite well. I don't get it anywhere I don't want to. It's just, you know, it takes me a few attempts. At it, but it probably should take you a few attempts. Just build up those eyeballs slowly, slowly, softly, softly, catchy monkey there. Just really take your time and use the smallest brush you've got and make sure it's got a nice point on it. I do I do like my insane detail brush for eyeballs. I'm wondering if the Psycho would be better. Does anybody use the Psycho for eyeballs? I have contemplated it. Then after that, as I mentioned, I think the pupils are this bright yellow. So I'm using Bay Blonde. That's an army painter color. It's in one of the zombie side sets again. And now I'm painstakingly steadying my hands, holding my breath, and just trying to dot a pupil exactly in the middle of each eye, trying not to make a nut boz eyed or anything, and I actually nail it first time for once. These are surprisingly to say how small this model is, his um his eyeballs are fairly large and round and quite easy to to paint well so best of luck to you but i think you will be able to manage that and there's not a lot more else i can do to help that just 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 be careful just be as careful as you can probably nail it. it's not it's not too bad actually his eyes are probably a lot easier than his his claws that i did a second ago speaking of which we will now shade those claws we're going to add a deep shader still using the insane deal detail brush you really want some precision placement of this shade i'm going to just do it around each claw that i painted in with zombie skin and then i'm going to paint all of his mouth dodging his his gums but just trying to get all of his teeth to really make those pop out again Pale Flesh is out. This is in the new set by Zzzz Army Painters, the Zombie Side Green Horde set. Uh, it's quite a dull pink, I, I guess I'd describe it. And I'm just going to make him a highlight on his nose, give him a little uh, shine on the end of his pink nose. I'll just do it on the very tip. It just makes it look a little bit more lifelike. And then we're going to highlight his ears using the same colour. So I'm just going to try and paint not on the inner of his ear, I'm going to paint down the edge of his ear and sort of blending that to the tips of his ears only on the inside though but just making those look a little bit more realistic well as realistic as i can get them uh just putting some life into them really they, they do look a little bit a little bit furry they look like velvet i want to stroke this rabbit is that a good idea mm, mm, not sure Sp speaking of it not being a good idea have you read what this abomination does in the game i cannot believe it is is this the, the most dangerous abomination it looked it looked pretty devastating in the fact that the fact it just kills you outright and anybody in your square. Uh, so the, for the next bit, I somehow forgot to press record on it. But what I have done is I've gone to get a couple of stones from the outside. Did this about three o'clock in the morning while I was painting this. That must have looked a little bit weird to any of my neighbours if they saw me go out the house with a torch, fumble around on the road for a couple of stones. And then I came back in and just glued them where I thought they'd look. Not obscure any of the model, but look, make just enhance that base. After that, I'm going to use Sterling Mud. This is one of those technical paints by Citadel. And I do actually have a video just about this on my channel. It's Sterling Mud and the uh, Step Grass, I think it was called. So if you're interested in looking what this looks like, a, a bit of a better tutorial on it, you can look at that. But I'm just applying quite a thick layer of this muddy textured paint all over this base of the model, just being extra careful using the very tip of my brush to work it towards the bottom of the bunny and the rest I'm just applying quite generously. 
uh, paint that all over and I, I splashed it up the stone a little bit to try and make it look like that stone had dropped in mud. Then this is some Highland Tufts by the Army Painter. If you don't watch my model box opening videos, this was in one of those boxes. I don't own any of this previously. So I'll put a link in the description below to some of my model box openings and to their site. And they send you a subscription and some random stuff arrives in the post. It's very, very exciting. I'm always very excited to open it. But this came in it and I was like, well, I'm putting this on something. And this, this bunny seemed perfect, a bit of grass with a bunny. So I'm just working out, I placed it on very, very gently. It's sticky underneath just seeing if that looks okay, not obscuring any of the detail that I would like to see. And I'm pretty happy with that. Just check it out from all angles. You can move it very, very easily until you press it down, obviously. And then I'm for, I'll add to make it look a little bit random, a little bit more realistic. Although having watched the video back now, it does look like I sort of place a rock and a, a rock behind it and then a grass and a grass. I move it. Let's see where it ends up. So you can see how easy is that, that is to move around. Still don't have any tweezers. I probably should have a pair of tweezers. That would make that a little bit easier. But you can see how easy that is to sort of work with. I'll put a link in the description below to that product as well if anyone's interested. They do different shades and stuff. Then I'm going to use the back of my brush. I'm just going to poke that down so it sort of sticks to the base. And that paint for the still and mud still a little bit wet. So it's going to sort of mend, meld, meld, I think, with that. Then going to use the tip of my brush this is one of my cheap brushes not that i think this would be particularly damaging but i'm just sort of stroking that grass back up in a semi straight line some of it got flattened down by my giant fingers poking at it but a pair of tweezers probably avoid that or that does just brush up nicely and it looks pretty good there hopefully you like that base obviously you can completely miss out this step I should mention that you don't have to do this do what you want with the bases this is just my idea this is just what i was going with then i'm going to use dead black just paint around the rim of that base, just tidying it up really, just getting it and making, I feel like the rim being black just makes the rest of the model pop out, stand, just draws your attention to the base and the model that's on it instead of, you know, blending into the furnishing below sort of thing. Then going to varnish this by hand with a brush. I'm using a cheap, cheap brush. You might have noticed I've started doing this on my videos. I mentioned and cheap brushes. I just avoided them for two years and I don't know why they're useful for a lot of this stuff like applying varnish so the matte varnish was all over the model except the teeth the inner of his ears and his eyeballs and his little button nose and then i'm going to use gloss varnish both of these were by vallejo and i'm just going to gloss up his eyeballs the insides of his ears a little bit and then all of his teeth and his gums as well because i think his gums would look a little bit wet and that is the abomni bunny completely finished 29 minutes including the basic everything not including the time i had to go outside and search for stones but you know you don't all have to do that and you can buy these products as well i think but you know real stones don't need painting they look realistic hopefully you enjoyed that it's a small start to wave two let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see next and check out my patreon please guys i really really do appreciate the support and when you're trying to knock out as many videos as i'm doing it's highly highly motivational anyway thank you all very much for watching hope you enjoyed it